Hi, this is Robert Quimby, and I'm going to tell you about functions in Python. So in this video, we're going to create some functions in Python. Uh, I'll show you how you can actually call those functions, and then you can use optional arguments to the function to, to make them more general. Uh, these include uh, uh, parameters and keywords. Uh, then we're going to take this code we make and we're going to put it into a file and create what's called a Python module. And we can import that code into our Python session and run it. I'll t tell you a little bit about variable scope. That's when you define x in a function. It's not the same x as someone else has in a different function. And finally, we're going to use the Python debugger to look at some errors in buggy code and, and debug it. All right. So first off, before we actually define functions, let's define what functions are in Python. Functions are in Python are simply a block of code that is not run until you call that function or run that function. So you define it in advance, and then at some later time, you can actually execute those lines of code. So if you know any other prog programming languages, you probably know that the very first uh, function that you write is called hello world. So we're going to define the hello, hello world function in Python. So the way you start defining a function is you type def and you hit a space. Def is going to tell the Python interpreter that we're defining a function. And then you type whatever name you want to give your function. Uh, we could call this hello world, but I'm going to give it a, a different name. I'm going to call it greeting. You can name, again, anything you want here. You can call it f. You can call it uh, greeting or hello world. Anything is fine. Uh, and then to complete this first line, we need parentheses, open and close like that. That's where you would put the arguments inside here, but we're going to start with no arguments. And then you put a colon. And what the colon does is it says we're about to start a block of code. So when I hit enter, since I am in uh, a Jupyter Notebook here, it automatically indents four spaces for me, and it's waiting for the first line of this function. So now we're actually going to start writing the text that's going to go in uh, the, the function. And usually what this function does is it just prints hello world. So we can use the print uh, command, which is actually a function. That's why I'm going to call it with parentheses here. And then inside uh, these parentheses, you put the arguments to the print function, which uh, is usually hello world. But this is for astronomers, so let's mix it up a little bit. And let's do hello universe. All right. So then what we do is we can hit enter again. You'll see the cursor is still indented four spaces here. It's waiting for uh, the next line in this function. But that's really all we need to get started here. So we can just leave it right there. We can uh, execute this command, shift enter, and that's it. We've defined a function. So you can see it didn't do anything. All it did is it just defined this function. So this function is now stored in memory somewhere. And it has this name greeting as its reference. So we can call a greeting, and, uh, and then we can use these parentheses to say we actually want to call the function and run it. And now, when we run this cell, it'll execute that line of code. So you can see what happened. We, we executed this line. It said, OK, we're going to, we need greeting. Greeting is a function. We're going to run that function. And then it prints hello universe, OK? So that's the, the bare bones start to a function. We can make this a little bit more interesting now. So instead of saying hello universe, let's, let's actually make it flexible so that we can say hello to whoever we want. So we're going to have some audience that we're going to talk to. So I'm going to create a new variable called audience. And this is, this is going to be an argument to this function. So when we call this, uh, function in the future, we're going to have to specify the name uh, or some uh, some audience to, to refer to. So we're going to pass audience, and then instead of saying hello to the universe, we're going to say hello to whoever the audience is. And here's how I'm going to do that. Um, this string right here is, of course, an object in, in Python. And objects have methods, and this string object has a method called format. And if I call that, I can pass this method the value audience. I'll pass it the reference audience, and it'll take that value, and it'll put it inside these little curly braces here. So whatever variable I specify, uh, it's going to go into here. 
right? So we can run this again. I'll just run this cell again. Shift Enter. See the number there changed. So now this this function has been redefined. We have a new definition of greeting. If I run this old one here, it's going to be very unhappy. Let's try doing that just to demonstrate. Uh, oh, it doesn't like that at all. Greeting missing one required positional argument audience. So we didn't pass it an argument. We're going to go ahead and do do that now. And what we wanted to do is say hello to the universe. So we can do that. Control run, and now boom, we got hello universe. Now the cool thing now is that we have a general function, more general function, so we can say hello to someone else. We can say hello world. We can run that, and it says hello world. So whatever argument we put here it gets passed to this function, gets passed into this method, and it's printed out. Okay. So we might, we can go a step further now, and we actually, instead of just asking the user to specify the audience, we can maybe give a default. So if I put at the definition level here, uh, so in the definition I say audience equals world, because that's usually the, the default, right? And I define this function again, I'll shift enter to run that cell. Now I can go back here and get rid of world, and I can just run this just as is, and you see it prints hello world, right? But what we can do is we can say, instead of printing world, we can say, um, we can go back to universe, and we can run this, and now we have our hello universe. All right, so whatever name you want to put in here, it'll use it, but if you put nothing, it goes back to the default, which is supplied in the definition here. All right. um, and we can have multiple uh, arguments, multiple um, uh, parameters for this function. I can give it uh, another one, let's call it um, a few pe fo for follow-up. We're going to do a, a follow-up statement. So we say hello and then we're going to say something else. And by default maybe we'll say nothing. We'll just say none. So none is a reserved word in Python. It's a special word that means there's nothing. All right. So here's what we can do. Let's, let's put a conditional statement here. So if a few p, right, and that's a that's a valid expression there. What this means is if the value of this expression is not false and not none, then it's going to run. So if I pass anything here, it'll run. And what we'll do is we'll just print out what that is. Okay, so I'll define this again. I'll shift enter. I ran that cell. Go down here. I'll run this again. And you see nothing changed because I didn't specify what this, this follow-up was. But I can add this now. If I add a few p equals, how are you? Oops, sorry about that. I can now uh, run this cell, and it has it prints both of these things. It says when I run this function, it prints hello, the default audience, which is world, hello world, and then it sees that f up is a value, it's not none, it's not false, so it prints what that is, and I told it to print how are you. Okay? So, just a little terminology here, when you run a function and you specify a value like this, this is referred to as a, a keyword. So we're using f up, f up here as a keyword. Right? Uh, we can also specify audience, again, Uh, let's do universe. And notice I, I changed the order here. We define audience first in our definition and, and f up second, but here I can switch these two around. It right? doesn't, doesn't matter when you're using keywords. Now there's a third, uh, another way I can call this, which is I can actually <coughs> uh, take off the, <coughs> sorry, I can take off the um, keyword names Right? And if I do this, this is going to do something weird the way it is, so I'll just let it run. See what it did? <laughs> Since I didn't tell it which is which, it assumes that the first thing that you type in here is the audience, is your first parameter, and the second thing is the second parameter. So it's saying, hello, how are you? And then the second statement is just universe. All right. All right. Um, 
I should also note that greeting is now an object in Python, just like everything I've told you before is, is a, an object in Python. This function is greeting in Python. So does that mean I can assign that, that object to the variable x? Can I say x equals greeting? Can I do this? Yes. Yes, you can. And after you've done that, you can actually run x like this, and it'll run your greeting. <clears throat> All right, so now that we've defined our, our function, what I want to do now is define a module. So module is just a, um, a series of, of commands from Python. It can include uh, function definitions, uh, but it can just be a script in general. And you can take all that code and you can put it into a file and save it, and then you can import it into Python when you want to. So the way you want to do this is you're going to actually create a file and the file should have the .py extension so that you so that Python knows it's a Python module and when it sees that uh, it'll and you can import it it'll just compile the code just like normal Python. All right? So here's how we can do that. You can open a text editor if you like. I, I usually use uh, Emacs. You can pop that open if you want. But it turns out if you have a Jupyter Notebook like this, there is a uh, text editor that's built right in. So let's do that. So if you go to your window um, where you have uh, your, your files listed, and if you don't have this, you can actually just go uh, to the file menu and you can say open, and it'll give you uh, the same listing. And then if you go over on the right side here, there's this thing that says new, and you click on that, and you can say new text file. And if you do that, it gives you a blank text file, and you can actually add text here. Um, one thing to know is I told you the file has to have a .py uh, ending. This is the, the name that it gives you by default. It's called untitled.txt. Let's change that. So just click on that, and it'll give this option to rename the file. And we're just going to call this hello.py. So we'll make it a Python file. Okay. So now we're defining a file called hello.py. And in this, all I want to do is I'm going to put that definition that we just made. So I'm going to go back to the, um, the little cell here. I'm going to select all this. I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to put that function definition into here. I'm just going to paste it. Okay. And then I can save this. And that's it. I've defined a module called hello with a function in it called greeting. All right. So we can run this now. We go back into uh, our Jupyter Notebook here. And I'll go down uh, here. We'll continue on with the slideshow. And so now what I want to do is to actually uh, import that module that we just defined. So it's important that I, I have it saved into the same directory that this notebook is running in. So when I just say import hello, what it's going to do is it's going to look through um, first the, the current working directory to see if there's a file called hello.py. And then after that, it's going to look through the Python path to look for other directories that we've told that we might have stored files. But if I run this, it finds hello and it imports it. So now, once we've done that, we can actually run that function. So in hello, this is a module now, we can hello dot, and we can put the name of the function we want to run, greeting, and put parentheses there to call it. And if we run this cell, I'll hit uh, control enter, boom, it run it. So this is now running, this is a slightly, um, this is not the greeting that we defined in the notebook, this is the greeting that we define in the, the hello module. Uh, and I can show you actually um, when we make a change to the, the function here and after we've done that we can reload it and see that it's different. So the change we'll make, uh, let's just make a small change, let's just add there. So we're going to say hello there world by default, why not? We have to save this file again. It's important to save. All right. Then we'll go back to our notebook. 
and we have to now reload this because if I just run this function again it doesn't know that we've made that change and if I import again it actually that doesn't work either so I can run that again why this doesn't work is because when you run this import command again and it says we've already imported a module called hello it doesn't replace it with a new with the new definition. It's, it just doesn't run this command. It says, hello already exists, I don't need to import it. It ignores it. All right. So if we really do want it to run it, we have to reload it. So the way we do this is we have to use a another module called import lib. All right. And in import lib there is a function called reload and that's what we want. So I could import that, that, that package import lib and then use the reload um, but I'm going to just import just the function to show you how to do this. So from, you type from, import lib, import, reload. Okay, so this is a command to just get the, the reload function from the import lib package. Okay. So we can run that. And now after we've done that, we can actually type reload and then our hello, our hello module. And I'll run this and it says it's now been imported and it tells you um, that it's done that. So if I go back now and I run this hello greeting, now it's got that there. there. It's, it's been uh, reloaded and it's the new version. Okay. So keep that in mind uh, if you're using modules and you change the module you need to re reload it back into your Python session. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to talk about was variable scope. So we're going to be defining all these functions and you might want to use say a variable called x. All right? And x is a popular variable, so it's a variable name that people might use in other, um, other functions. So is it safe to use x in a variable, in, in, in a function definition? Well it turns out yes, it's absolutely safe and I'll show you how this works. So I'm just going to start by defining x and y, just at the top level here. And then I'm going to define a new function. So I'm going to say def, and I'm just going to call this new func. New func with a c. And this is a, going to be a function that takes an argument called x. All right, and I put a colon there, hit enter, and now I'm defining the, um, the text. Okay, so what I can do is I'll, I'll just define this to be a simple function that just prints x plus y. Okay, and that's it. So I'll go back to the to the. Um, uh, by the way, what happens when you when you um, don't indent? That's how Python knows that this is the end of the definition of the function. So it's only the indented lines that are, are included in this function definition. You go back to the beginning here, and it knows that you're done defining it. So it's different than other languages where you have like a uh, begin and an end statement explicitly or you have curly braces or something to enclose the function definition. Here it's just simply done by um, how the, the code looks, which is what you end up doing anyways. You always indent um, in other languages just to make it look pretty. Alright, so we're going to run this function and we're going to pass it variable 3. So take a look at what this does here. All right, we define x is 5 we define y equals one. We're going to um, run. We're going to define this function, and then we're actually going to run the function, and we're going to pass it the value three. And when we do this, I'll just run it. The value print x plus y is four. All right. So see what it did? It took the three, right, and it called this function and it passed it that value three, and it said three plus y. And y is not defined inside this function, so it went to the top level and it found this y here and it put the value 1 there, 3 plus 1 is 4, and then printed it out. Alright, so be careful about that. Make sure you know that you can inherit variables from higher levels, um, uh, if it's uh, from the top level I should say. Uh, you can define a function inside of a function and then you can inherit variables from the top level but not from within another function. And when you define uh, this x here in this function, by the way, it doesn't change this x at the command line. So if I actually run this whole thing and then I say print x after we're done printing our x plus y, what's it going to print? 
it's going to print 5 because it didn't change it at this level. This, this x never was changed when we ran this here. This is a completely different x. It has the same name to you and me, but, but Python knows that this is the x specific to this function. It's local to that function. The scope of this x is in, only inside this function. All right. So one last thing that we're going to go over here is debugging code. If you start writing enough code, you're probably going to make a mistake at some point, and you're going to, you might need a little bit of help trying to figure out what went wrong. So let's define um, uh, a simple function. We'll start again with, uh, let's see, we'll do a def, and then we're going to define a uh, new func uh, 2, we'll just call it new func 2, and it's going to take an argument uh, x, and y, right? We'll give it two arguments, and what it's going to do is it's going to um, return a value, and then we're, let's have it return y divided by let's say x plus y minus three. Okay, so I can run this, and that just defines that function. So we have new func two defined now. So now what we can do is we can call that function new func2, and we're going to pass it the values, uh, let's say, 1 and 2. Uh, sorry, 1 and, let's do uh, 3 and 4, actually. Okay, we'll pass 3 and 4, and we'll run this, and it prints out 1. All right, so it sets y equal to 4, it takes y, um, uh, sorry, it takes x equals a 3, adds 4 to that, subtracts 3, you get 4 divided by 4, and that's 1. All right, so that's fine. We define a perfectly good function, and you're going to do this yourself sometimes. You'll, you'll define a function that works, and then you go and you change the arguments a little bit, and something goes terribly wrong. All right, so now let's, let's figure out what just happened here. So we're getting this error. This is a message here that's telling you that it's come into an error, that error is called a zero division error, and it explains that means it's you're dividing by zero. And it's actually showing you the code here that you've run. So just using this, you can actually figure out what's going on. But we're actually going to do a little bit deeper look here. Um, so it's it's showing you how it's operating. So we define this function in this cell, and then we called that function. So at the kind of top level we have this call to the function. That's what it's showing here. The fourth line in this cell, and by the way you can just uh, if you click on the side here and, and you type L it'll give you the line numbers. It'll toggle those on and off. So it's saying at the fourth line here we're, we're doing this that calls this new func so it actually goes up here into this code here and the second line right there this is where we're getting that error. Okay. So what is that error? Let me actually pop out a second here so we can see this more clearly. Let me uh, put this on a separate. Okay. All right. So let's figure out what that error is. And, and to do this, we're going to use debug. Uh, debug. You can put this uh, parenthesis in front of it. That makes it a, a ma uh, it's a magic command when you have things that start with that. But actually, in in uh, Jupyter notebooks, you don't even need that. Just type debug. And run this cell, control enter, and here's what we get. We're, we're actually inside the code now, right where it crashed. All right. So this is IPDB, that's the IPython debugger, and it's telling you we crashed on this line right here. Now the cool thing about this debugger is that we actually have access to the variables as they were defined. So we can actually say print y. Right? And it'll tell us the value of y right there at the point where the code crashed. And it's saying we saw this, this uh, divide by 0 error. So let's see, we're dividing by x plus y minus 3. So what is the value of that? Print x plus y minus 3. And it'll tell you it's 0. So this is how we know, oh, that's why, because we, we, we're, we're passing a value that's at 0, and so that's not allowed. OK. So this is incredibly useful. This is kind of a trivial example, but a lot of times you're going to get some some weird crash, and you can actually go in and you can see what the values are. And what's what's interesting, what's especially helpful, is that you're not just limited to right here where the code crashed. You can actually go up to a higher level, 
where you were call, calling this function from. So now we're back at the higher level. We're, we're outside of that function. And what was x here? We can say prints x. So I think it might have been defined differently. Yeah, it was 5 here at the higher level. So remember, each one of these different frames has its own value. So this is the top level frame. I don't think I can go any higher than this. So I type up here and I in, uh, run that. It's going to say that's the oldest frame. So oldest means it's the, the highest level. But I can go back down into that function. So now we're back into new func here. And if I check the value of x here, I'm going to run out of space. So let me go back here. If I print x again, just to show you this, x is 1 at this level. So we have these different frames where we have different variable scope. We have different variables x inside the function and outside the function. And we can actually go up and down through these frames to see what all those values are and help debug our problems. Uh, so there's a few other things that are important to know. L is, is uh, nice. If you type L here, it'll just list the lines of code around where you currently are stopped. Uh, you don't have to hit, uh, you don't have to type uh, up. You can just type U as a shorthand, and that'll take you up. Or you can type D, and it'll take you down. Uh, and probably the most important thing is once you start running this debugger, if you're running it in a, in a IPython session, it actually holds uh, the focus. So you can't do anything else in this notebook until you finish this. So the way you finish it is you quit with a Q. Or you type quit, but just Q will work. You run that, just hit enter, and now you're done. And you can see you've gone back into uh, regular mode and you're, you're free to run more cells. All right, so just one last bit of advice. Um, I hope uh, there's some helpful information in here. Uh, what I wanted to impress upon you is that you should go out of your way to write functions. Right? Functions are great. They make your code uh, easier to read and make it more efficient and make it easier to debug. They make it easier to write even. So write functions as often as you can. If you're ever in a situation where you start writing code and you're like, you know what, I, this is very similar to a block of code I just wrote a few few lines ago, that's your, your clue that you should be writing a function. So take, take all that code, put it into one function, write it one time. Don't write it twice. Write it one time, call it twice. That'll make your life much easier. So uh, with that, good luck.